जैन फ्रेंड्स आई मेज गौरवारी एंड यूर वॉचिंग द चाणक्य डायलॉग सपोर्टेड दी ऑफ गर्ल्स ऑल राइट फाइव मिलियन ऑफ दैम गिव दैम फूड टू ईट गिव दैम रूफ ओवर दे हेड्स दैट पाकिस्तानी इज अर टेंथ मोर देन फोर्टी कैनेडियन डिप्लोमैट्स विल बी रिक्वायर्ड टू लीव एंड गेट आउट एंड गो बैक टू खालिस्तान विच इज कैनेडा जैन फ्रेंड्स आई मेज गौरवारी एंड यूर वॉचिंग द चाणक्य डायलॉग्स इंग्लिश Like this video subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Now News Click is a portal. News Click is a news portal which is now being raided by the ED. As we speak the enforcement directorate is going all over the country and is raiding various premises and uh, the CPIM leader Yachuri Sitaram Yachuri's house has also been searched. Now what is this uh, News Click? There was a report in the New York Times that News Click has been funded by the chinese now this this took place in the uh, this this report came out sometime back in the new york times and new york times said said very categorically that hey here is you know this news portal which also runs in india has branches in other places also runs in india and this is funded by the chinese today i'm going to talk about how news is manipulated and it's important that you understand how news is manipulated especially by foreign powers this whole concept of uh, information warfare the thing is that when you try and take any action against an organization like news click the first thing that they are going to do is play the victim card that is the first reaction and that is the first reaction of any media organization for that matter play the victim card we are media how can you stop us we are media how can you take action against us we are media therefore only we can question you cannot question so this entire premise that we are media and only we can question and nobody else can question is what has led to certain sections of media uh, being absolutely out of control in this case receiving up to 38 crore indian rupees from a chinese source so the chinese have been giving money now why would the chinese give money to an indian news outlet for what i i can understand uh, you know somebody has uh, a chinese mobile phone and they want to they want to give ads that's okay or maybe you know uh, somebody says that uh, you know here is a chinese manufacturer of uh, uh, maybe maybe washing machines and they want an advertisement on on some indian television channel because they are doing business in india and that i can understand I I I don't agree with it but I can understand. What I cannot understand is somebody receiving 38 crore rupees in cash from China. And that too to run Chinese propaganda in India. I am happy that ED has come down very harshly upon News Click and anybody associated with News Click. There is this entire cabal operating specially operating in Delhi. When I say Delhi I mean NCR Delhi because there are many of them in Noida also. and there is this entire cabal that is operating foreign funded and all it does is spread misinformation and if you point out to them that this is misinformation you know then those people come back and play the victim card and say no no how can you point out we are the media how can you ask us questions so all this nonsense is happening and i'm happy that ed has started to crack down upon all these people uh the other news that i have for you today is uh the pakistani government saying that Uh, you know there are more than 1.1 million uh, illegals in pakistan and they need to be sent back to their country of origin which is 1.1 million afghans it's far more than that because every time i talk to a pakistani he says 5 million somebody says 6 million somebody says 7 million but now pakistanis are saying 1.1 million foreigners living illegally in pakistan because of their involvement in funding and facilitating terrorists so essentially what pakistan is saying is that 1.1 million afghan terrorists exist inside pakistan and that's why you sending them back right because you said that they are involved in funding and carrying out terror attacks and training etc that is the premise so 1.1 million will be sent back now this is stupid pakistan does not need terrorists from afghanistan there are enough and more terrorists inside pakistan see terrorism is not so much about uh, the operations of a terror network that is one part of it of course an important part but not the only part it is the mindset it is the ideology the ideology of terrorism is something that pakistan truly believes in and parvez musharraf 
their former army chief and president is on record saying that uh, you know uh, people like Osama bin Laden and uh, Hafiz Saeed are heroes in Pakistan. He's on record. You can you can check on the internet. You can check on YouTube. He's saying they're heroes for the common Pakistani. They're heroes. So when Osama bin Laden becomes your hero, why are you blaming poor Afghans? They never wanted to come to Pakistan in the first place. They came because there was a civil war in their country. A civil war that Pakistan's generals started by accepting money from the CIA. And then what Pakistan does is Pakistan goes to the world and says, Hey, look, we are such fine people. Yeah. We are such paragons of virtue. Look at us. We saw brother Muslims bleeding and we said, welcome to our home. That is not what happened. Every Pakistani who tells you how Pakistan supported the Afghans. All right. Five million of them gave them food to eat, gave them a roof over their heads. That Pakistani is a liar. And I will today tell you why. Because those Afghans did not come to Pakistan out of their free will. Pakistani generals, starting with General Ziaul Haq, General Hamid Gul, took money from the CIA. They took wages of blood. They took money from the CIA and they started this entire campaign of Mujahideen against the Soviets. That is how this entire thing blew up in Afghanistan. And as a result, uh, the poor Afghan had nowhere to go. Why Pakistan? Why not Tajikistan? Why not some other country? Because culturally Pakistan is closer to them in terms of language, in terms of food, in terms of kind of people. There are more Pashtun in Pakistan than any other neighboring country of Afghanistan. Pakistan has a massive Pashtun, Pashtun population and they said that and of course they, they had relatives there. So it was natural that they would come to Pakistan. Though they ended up living in refugee camps in their millions as per Pakistani records. But the fact of the matter is that today, why do Afghans hate Pakistanis? Why do Afghans hate Pakistanis? They hate Pakistanis because they say that you took money from the Americans, blood money from the Americans, and you burnt our country to the ground. And therefore, we hate you. You know, Pakistanis were celebrating when, when the Taliban took over in Kabul. And they were saying, oh, that is the end of Indian influence in Afghanistan. But what happened today? Those very Afghans are entering Pakistan and killing Pakistanis. You see, uh, this is what has happened. So where is the miscalculation? What the Pakistanis thought was that Afghans will fall at their feet out of sheer gratitude and say that, hey, you've been so helpful. You're angels. But the same Afghans hate Pakistanis because it is because of the Pakistanis that an entire generation and two generations of Afghans have grown up in refugee camps. It is because of Pakistan. In another news, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 3 lakh crore rupees is going to be spent by the Indian Air Force in purchasing new weapons. 3 lakh crores. Amongst them, the chief bill is 1.2 lakh crore for 180 light combat aircraft. Mark 1A, Tejas. 180 new Tejas will be brought. Uh, bought and uh, they're going to be manufactured in India and uh, this will significantly impact the development of a domestic fighter aircraft manufacturing ecosystem because you have to believe in your platform before you can ask the world to believe in your platform. That is what happened with Rafael. For a very long time, nobody bought the Rafael. No, nobody used the Rafael except for maybe one or two countries. No, Rafael was never a popular platform. The French started using it. Slowly, the Indians used it. And suddenly, today, Rafael is the talk of the town. So you have to believe in your systems first before you can sell the system to somebody else. So great. Uh, apart from that, uh, major upgrade of the Sukhoi 30 fighter jets amounting to some 60,000 crores. This, this will be a joint effort by HAL and the Indian Air Force. And uh, another... this. Another, another, another project is indigenous, you know, light utility helicopter LUH will also replace Cheetah Chetak helicopter fleet. So the entire Cheetah and Chetak helicopter fleet will go. It's anyway 50, 60 year old technology. It will go and light utility helicopter will take its place. Apart from that, uh, the Indian Air Force is developing a spy plane capable of monitoring enemy activity, enemy activity efficiently. The intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition and reconnaissance ISTAR aircraft will enhance battlefield transparency and situational awareness for the IAF. 
the Indian Air Force is advancing its long-range air defense systems, having obtained approval for Project Kusha to develop an indigenous S-400-like system. Project Kusha is that the DRDO is going to develop something exactly like the S-400, maybe even better. And that is where all this money is being spent, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in another news, Khalistani supporters have again staged a protest outside the Indian High Commission in London. Uh, nothing exciting there. They do it every time they have a holiday and that is how the Khalistani celebrate. Let's have a protest. Let's abuse people. Let's throw stones at people. Let's break a couple of rules. So, nothing happened. They've gone back. They came. They barked. They whimpered. And they went back. All right. And also, India has told Canada to withdraw 40 diplomatic staff. Now, India has, uh, Canada has 62 diplomats in India. And India said that your number should be reduced by 41. So essentially, 40 diplomats, Canadian diplomats have to leave India by 10th of October. So today we are on the 3rd. On the 10th, for more than 40 uh, Canadian diplomats will be required to leave and get out and go back to Khalistan, which is Canada. So they'll be getting out. And this, again, a diplomatic law in India, Canada ties. But then uh, you only have Justin Trudeau to blame. You can't blame anybody else. It's not India that started mudslinging. And mudslinging is fine, but you've got to back it up by proof. Justin Trudeau, till date, has not given any proof. He just keeps on repeating that there are credible allegations. That's it. And the only person who's supporting him is Thagmeet Singh. Khalistani, his partner in crime, who says that he also believes, he has seen the proof and he says, oh, this is wonderful proof, I believe it. Thagmeet, I don't know what his education levels are, but, uh, you know, the civilized world does not believe Canada. Thagmeet may. Thagmeet is a, is a sly politician. All right, so Thagmeet may believe, but the world will not. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, I come to the question and answers. And we have comments here. Shaila Shailja Satish Shailja Satish In London, even a sick family cars were fully damaged with red paint like blood and window panes of the car having bullet marks since his family was against Khalistanis they are saying that they get threats it's a very sad state, yes, I agree with you it's a very sad state of affairs and UK where people pride themselves in the rule of law they should quickly take cognizance and uh, Mr. Harman Kapoor should be given security and there should be a crackdown against the Khalistanis. Bite-sized journeys. If you see the daily state of affairs in the neighborhood such as Brampton and Surrey, it feels you've walked into a ghetto. The local people here don't say it because Canada has a societal culture of not saying anything or doing anything that hurts someone else's feelings. Over time, this culture is used to and morphs into something that now people use towards something that looks like something bad is happening, then look the other way. This then leads to even the authorities then avoid avoiding confronting these bad actors and then perpetuates a situation where these bad people get motivation to go further. Hence, Dr. Jashankar absolutely hit the hammer on the nail when he said that Canada perpetuates climate of terrorist activities. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense because you want to look the other way, you don't want to upset the other guys. You see, Khalistanis are born and bred in an environment where regular humiliation is something that they cherish. If you treat them decently, they won't know how to handle decency. <clears throat> so, yeah, I agree with you. Absolutely. Bite-sized journeys. What you have said uh, makes a lot of sense. Then there is a 007 raw. Wow. Hi, sir. Good to see you. My name is Arjun. Hello, Arjun ji. Don't you think all countries such as UK, US, Canada are playing double game by providing safe haven to Khalistani terrorists instead of deporting them back to India? I would like to point out Gurpatwan Singh Pannu and David Coleman, Headley, whom US had not handed over to India till date. In your opinion, what should India's options if China attacks Taiwan? And don't you think after Taiwan, India will be the next target for them? I don't think so. First of all, yeah, about the deporting thing, yeah, it should be done. They are not doing it because everybody wants to play a double game. Everybody wants to have the hook, you know, how to, how to keep India at a certain level. So, yeah. And uh, what is India? You know, I can only guess what will India do if China invades Taiwan? Uh, you know what? I, th I think we should 
we should uh, we should think through the scenario very carefully. Uh, and it is not that they will attack India next. They have already attacked India. They have attacked India in 1962, 67. They attacked our, uh, our, our uh, brothers in Galwan. So how many more times do we want the Chinese to attack before we realize that Chinese want to attack us and mean to attack us? I think we should have some sort of an understanding with Taiwan and the other world powers. See, China must be punished. China must be punished, China must be slapped around, and China must be disciplined. And the only way to do it is for the world to unite and give China a thrashing of a lifetime. The last question is, why doesn't Russia stop sale of oil to Pakistan because of their supply of weapons to Ukraine? Uh, you see, two things. First of all, Russia has sold, I think, oil to Pakistan only once. And that to Pakistan, there was some actually, it's not a direct sale like we, it's all guarantees by China. And China and Russia are pretty close. So there are guarantees and even the money that the Russians accepted was not Pakistani uh, rupees because Pakistani rupees are junk. What they accepted was Chinese money. So there is this China factor and I don't think Pakistan is going to import oil from Russia uh, yet again. And it doesn't matter actually to Pakistan because they don't have the capacity to refine it. And... Uh, it's, it's not doing them any good. It's not led to any fall in the prices of diesel or petrol. I don't know. They, they, just, they just wanted to buy Russian oil as an ego problem. Because Imran Khan said that he, he would have bought Russian oil. So they said we'll also buy. There was no logic to Pakistan buying Russian oil, by the way. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please press the like button. Subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Chai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Chai.